Hello everybody and welcome to another CB Showtunes tutorial. Now today what we're going to be doing is we are going to be building a car simulation for our game. Now this of course is not going to be a completely realistic uh, car simulation. You have to play around with the settings and all. But uh, yeah, it should work out pretty good. So let's go and get started. Now the first thing that you want to need to know about uh, making a car is that you're going to be using a car wheels collider. Now these wheel colliders, they automatically come inside Unity. They're extremely useful for setting up car um, simulations and all. And it makes things a whole lot easier when you're developing your game. So let's go and cover this as a first step. And then we'll get into the script. Now. To get this wheel collider, all you need to do is have a game object. Now, I simply created some empty game objects called front R wheel, front L wheel, and so on. Now, you can make these into capsules or spheres or whatever you want it to be, but make sure that whenever you're setting this up, it needs to be done in the beginning, okay? Whatever object you're going to be using, that is what you're going to be focusing on. Okay, so. Whenever you got your object set up and ready to go, you're going to come over here to where it says Add Component, select Add Component, type in Wheel, and you'll see Wheel Collider. So when you select that, it's going to bring up this sub-menu right here inside your inspector, and there's a couple of things that you need to know. Okay, so you have mass. This is pretty much just saying how much it weighs. Now this affects the speed of your game object and so on. So think of it like the weight of something. You don't think that something that can only run, say, 30 miles per hour carrying a 50 pound person compared to carrying a 200 pound person. Okay, so the radius just decides how big these wheels are. Now, you could adjust that to whatever you want it to be. Right now I'm gonna have it to be one. Remember, the taller it is, the harder it is for it to stay stable. Also, same thing with the width. You want to make sure that it's wide enough so it won't tip over. Now, that's just common sense, of course, but, you know. You know, a will dampening rate, that's pretty much just saying how much it's going to dampen over time. Um, we'll get into that in a little bit. We have the suspension distance, how much suspensions we got. So, let's just say we put it at a 0.8 suspension. Now, if we press play you're going to notice that when we drop, or we should drop, oh, there we go. Okay, so the higher our suspension is, the more distance we're going to be looking at our drop rate's going to be. Now, we're on the ground right now, so let's go ahead and drag ourselves up a little bit. We're, now we're going to press play, and here we go. So as you can see, we now have our suspension dropping us to the ground. Now, I have our suspension to be very loose, um, and we'll get into that in a second as well. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep going down. Now, here, of course, okay, we just did force at point distance. Don't worry about that. Uh, center, we're not really worried about that either. Okay, suspension spring. Spring tells us how much spring we have inside this. So the lower the number, say, for instance, 5. Uh, the springer it should be. So let's go and check that out. Okay, so that looks interesting. Now let's try like 35,000. Okay, so we're going to press play. Okay, that looks pretty good. Alright, now we have our damper. So damper is pretty much saying how, um, I guess you could say it's the smoothness of the spring. So we have her set at 5,000. This actually decides how loose the spring is going to be. Uh, but let's go and press play when it's at 2. So as you can see, we're really, really bouncy and stringy. So the damper pretty much just says how strong the string is going to be, which, uh, yeah, we're sort of going all over the place. That's interesting. Okay. So we now have to set it up to where we could decide the dampness of this. Let's go ahead and set it up like maybe a thousand for now. Okay, target position, don't worry about that either. We're not too worried about it. Um, forward friction and all these other stuff, uh, not too really into all that. Now we have sideways friction. So 
Um, this right here, you're really only wanting to mess with the stiffness value. It's just saying, okay, are you going to be slipping or are you not going to be slipping whenever you turn? Uh, stuff like that. So if I lower that down to a 0.2, then we're going to be slipping a whole lot easier whenever we are going forward. See how we're drifting like that? Okay. And let's go and press play. Okay, so that just pretty much covers the wheel clatters. You can just experiment with these things to make it work a whole lot better for yourself. Okay, so let's go and cover the car control script. Now, let's head over to Visual Studios first, just so we can get that taken care of. This script is actually a very simple script. Uh, I found this script uh, by this other dude, and he, he did really well with it, and I'm super excited about showing it. Okay, so here we have this public float, motor force, steer force, and brake force. So these three variables are pretty much saying the speed, how much we can turn, and of course our brake. Now we also have our public wheel colliders. We have front, or basically all of our wheel colliders that we have, okay? Now, if you want this to be a game object, say for instance your wheel colliders on a game object, you could still put this public wheel collider and then just put your game object on there. Um, we're not going to be using the void start on this one. Now, on void update, we're going to be making two floats right here. Float V, which is vertical. Float H, which is horizontal. Same thing as our normal setup. And then we're going to multiply that. Instead of by f speed, we're going to be multiplying by motor force, which, of course, is our uh, speed, technically speaking. And then, of course, our rotation, which, of course, is our steer force. Now, we're going to just put in a very simple equation. We're going to say that our rear right wheel is going to have motor torque, which is equal to our um, vertical axis, so plus or minus. We're going to take our rear, and we're going to do the same thing. Now we're going to assign our uh, steering angles, which, of course, is going to be our front wheel left and right. Okay. So that's all that those variables right there are doing. Okay, so now time for the fun part. Now this is basically going to say if we press the space bar or hold down the space bar, then it's going to apply our brake force. So how much brake force we're going to be dealing. So if brake, if you take a look at this, we're going to say rear left wheel is going to be at brake torque. So this is how much we're going to be uh, braking, right? Uh, and if you have brake force, which is the number, the higher the number is, the faster you're going to brake. So we have it set at brake force, which we're going to go set in the inspector. And then once we get the key up, it's going to set brake torque back to zero, which means that it's no longer going to be braking. Now this was something that I came up in my code, um, so I sort of modified the script a little bit. But what this does is it simply uh, allows us to brake without us having to press any button. So we're not going to be continually going forward whenever we press forward or uh, when we let go of forward and all. Because I was dealing with that issue and I was like, man, we can't do this. So here we got this. If, if input docket axis vertical is n equal to zero. So basically, if we're not pressing forward or backwards, which would equal to one or negative one, if it equals to zero, which means we don't have any hands on our keyboard, then we're going to say our left rear wheel is going to apply our brake torque of brake force. And same thing with our right rear. Otherwise, which of course is our else, it's going to equal zero. So same concept as this right here, except we're going to be applying it with our movement. So let's go ahead and head back over here, take a look at our inspector. Now, keep in mind, you will need to add a rigid body um, to your car object um, because that is actually going to be dealing with physics, okay? It's going to be using gravity, so it's going to be dropping on the ground. Okay, now, once you get your car controller script on your character, or game object, or car, um, you're going to be setting your motor force. So let's go ahead and set this up super high. Let's call it like 25,000. You know, 25,000 horsepower, you know? Pretty cool stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and drive this. Now, it's going to be a slow takeoff, but it's going to start picking up speed. And as you can see, we're picking up a pretty good amount of speed. Let's go and let go. Okay. 
Now keep in mind that whatever your speed is going to be, that's sort of what you want your brake force to be because <clears throat> if you're going 25,000 miles per hour, uh, you can't just hit the brake at 5,000 miles per hour and expect to slow down super fast. So let's go and raise it up to like 20, and let's say 23,000. Let's go and try that, see what that does. So we're going to go ahead and test that out. So we're going to pick up speed a little bit. And we're going to go ahead and let go. Still not slowing down too fast, so let's go ahead and put that up to 25,000. Oh, and make sure that you have your wheel colliders right here put in place. Um, you know, front wheels on the front and back wheels on the back. It doesn't matter if they're left or right or whatnot. Um, it really doesn't matter. Okay, so we're going to press forward now. And let's go ahead and release. And let's go and slow down. If it will slow down. Okay, there we go. So we are slowing down, but at a very, very slow rate. So let's go ahead and raise our uh, slowdown rate to about maybe 50,000. Maybe double will work. So we're going to press play. And let's do this again. So we're going to go and roll forward. Here we go. Pick up speed. Let go. Okay, we're still going super, 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 super fast. Alright, so we're going to have to go raise this up to like 100,000, guys. 100,000. 1, 2, 3. Yeah, I can't count. I cannot count, guys. Okay, so here we go. We're going to press play again. All just testing, you know? Fun stuff. So let's go and test at a slow speed and all. Okay, so we are slowing down, as you can see. Uh, it is applying its brake force. Perfect. And if we pick up speed and all, let's go ahead and turn a little bit. Okay, so it is slowing down, which is perfect. Now we need to work on our steering force. Now our steering force is pretty much going to be um, like this. So we're going to keep an eye on this over here, or on our scene tab, while we're pre playing the game. So we're going to go ahead and uh, we don't want to be on maximize, guys. Go ahead and press pause, play. Okay. So whenever we turn, if you notice, we're turning like really, really far, which is nice. Um, let's go ahead and turn like 90 degrees and let's see what happens. So we're going to go ahead and turn. As you can see, we're not turning anywhere. Okay. So we're going to modify our turn. Let's go ahead and do that. Let's say 30. Press play, and here we go. Now keep in mind, whenever you're turning, you are going to be actually needing to turn inside that certain direction. So if you're turning with a large uh, turn and all, say for instance 180 degrees or 90 degrees or whatnot, um, it's not going to turn you fully because you are not officially, how would I put it, uh, you're not actually on a turn angle. If you're at 90 degrees or... 180 degrees, you're not actually turning. See how you're actually turning on this right here? Well, if you notice that 90 degree turn, we didn't actually turn at all, which, you know, was not great. Okay, so, yep, there we go, guys. You just gotta experiment, make it work as you would want it to work, and yeah. Alright, hope you guys like this video. If you like it, please like, subscribe, check out some of my other videos, and I'll see you guys next time.